All right, you guys, welcome back again to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion. This is actually going to be our last discussion in our series on ICU drips and concluding our series here specifically talking about paralytics. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the different reversal medications that we use and some of the finer details and the intricacies that come with using these medications. Before we get too far in though, if this is your first time here to our channel and watching one of our videos and you'd be interested in more critical care educational content such as what we're putting out here, then I truly invite you guys to subscribe to our channel below. Make sure you hit that bell icon and select all notifications. This way as soon as one of our new lessons become available, you'll be notified. As always, a special shout out to all of our awesome subscribers out there. You guys continue to support this channel with your likes, comments, and subscriptions, and that really means a lot to us. And so for that, I do want to thank you. And also make sure you guys head on over to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and follow us over there. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson, and this is ICU Advantage. All right, so let's get in here and talk about these neuromuscular blocking reversal agents that we have at our disposal. So I really need to start this lesson talking about our autonomic nervous system. And really what I'm talking about here is our sympathetic nervous system versus our parasympathetic nervous system. So we all know the sympathetic is our fight or flight system and the parasympathetic is our rest and digest. And so we can really think about these as working on each of our organ systems in opposite directions. And in order to do this, when we're talking about our sympathetic activation, that this is going to require catecholamines to activate adrenergic receptors. In the case of the parasympathetic activation, though, we actually have acetylcholine that's going to activate muscarinic receptors. Now this part here is going to be interesting because the way that we actually reverse our neuromuscular blockers is by increasing the availability of acetylcholine. And so essentially what happens is we're going to give medications that are going to inhibit an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. And so this is going to cause it to stop breaking down acetylcholine, which then in turn leads to this increase in acetylcholine available. And so the reason that we do this is by having more of the acetylcholine available, it's going to compete with those neuromuscular blockers and knock those off the receptors in order to be able to activate those receptors. And so a couple of the medications that we use in order to do this are a medication called neostigmine, another one called peridiostigmine, and finally another one called endrophonium. So all sounds great. We've created more acetylcholine available. We've knocked the neuromuscular blockers off the receptors. Everything should be good in this world. Well, unfortunately, we aren't just targeting the acetylcholinesterase specifically at our muscle cells, but this is going to have an impact throughout the entire body, which means we're going to have acetylcholine available everywhere, which means then that we would have far too much activation of our parasympathetic nervous system. And if we overactivate this parasympathetic system, then we're going to see things like bradycardia and even asystole, increased salivation, constriction of our patient's pupils, bronchoconstriction, increased urine output, and increased peristalsis. So especially when we look at our bradycardia and even asystole, this can be a very serious side effect for our patient. So in order to prevent this from happening, anytime we give one of these anticholinesterase blockers, we also need to give an anti-muscarinic drug at the same time to prevent these side effects. Now our anti-muscarinic drugs, you're often going to hear them also referred to as anticholinergic, so that may ring a bell with some of these medications. There's really three main drugs within this category that are at our disposal. One called scopolamine, another one called glycopyrrolate, or goes by the name Robinol, and the last one is a medication I'm sure you guys have all heard of. It's called atropine. So in the case of scopolamine, this is one that we rarely are going to use IV, mainly due to the sedative properties that this medication has. You're going to see this one most commonly given as a transdermal patch, really for its anti-emetic properties. Now our next medication here, glycopyrrolate, this one is going to be our go-to drug of choice. 
the reason for this is this medication doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier. You've probably also seen this medication used because we'll, we'll oftentimes use it to decrease secretions in our patients. But here, we're looking for it to prevent or really reduce that vagal-induced bradycardia. And when used IV, this medication has a quick onset of about one minute. And so again, we're going to be giving these medications at the same time that we're giving these acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Now, so finally, let's move on and talk about atropine here. Now, atropine here, unlike glycopyrrolate, that this does cross the blood-brain barrier. And so one of the side effects of this medication, the tachycardia, is one of the reasons we don't use it to manage secretions. Uh, but this, in addition to it crossing the blood-brain barrier, is the reason that we want to go with the glycopyrrolate first. So we're really only going to use this medication to treat bradycardia in those emergent situations where the glycopyrrolate isn't helping. Now, atropine also has a very quick onset of just 45 seconds. So if you kind of think about what's happening here, we're giving medications that are going to make acetylcholine available throughout our patient's body because of the potential serious consequences of having too much activation of these muscarinic receptors in the parasympathetic nervous system, we need to also give medications that are going to block the muscarinic receptors and limit that parasympathetic activation. As a result, though, some of the effects that we can see from this may mimic things like sympathetic nervous system activation. And so the last thing that I actually want to talk about here is a medication that's pretty new to the market. It's a medication that we call Sigamidex, or it also goes by the trade name Bridian. And this medication was actually just approved by the FDA in 2015. So a very new medication that's available to us. The interesting thing about this medication, though, is it actually directly binds our amino steroids. And so these are going to be the medications like our rocuronium, vecuronium, and pancuronium. And so by binding these medications, it's actually going to prevent them from being available to block the acetylcholine receptors. Now, we have discovered that it has a much greater affinity, though, of all these medications specifically to rocuronium. So because this medication only binds with our amino steroids, it's going to be completely ineffective for our other paralytics. So this is going to be our succicoline, atricurium, and our cisatricurium. But the really nice thing is when we give them this medication, in about two to four minutes, we see complete reversal of the amino steroids. So a really cool option that has just recently become available to us. Uh, obviously, being a new medication, this one is pretty expensive. So uh, I think a lot of times, in a lot of cases, uh, we are typically trying some of these other things first. All right, and with that said, that's going to complete this lesson and finish our series here talking about ICU drips. I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, if you found it useful, leave us a like, leave us a comment, let us know down below. And if you're new here, hopefully we earned a subscription from you. Make sure and check out another one of our awesome videos right here. And as always, you guys have a great day.